What we want to discuss in this video is the depiction of qualitative variables. We said that a couple of primary ways to depict, to depict the count of qualitative variables uh, would be with a bar graph or with a pie chart. Okay, and remember again, uh, with these qualitative variables, it's difficult to depict them unless we're talking about their count in a data set. So let's take a look at uh, an example from a quality control context. Let's say we have an assembly line for bicycles, let's just say. In fact, the product type here is bicycle number 32. And let's say we've inspected uh, 2,217 of these bicycles, and there are some number of them, 144 of those 2,217, that have some, num uh, that have some kind of nonconformity. Okay? Uh, so, for example, 21 of those bicycles had blisters on the paint. Um, 38 of them had a light spray area uh, on the paint of the bicycle. 22 had drips, 11 had oversprays, 47 had runs. And then there, for five of those other bicycles, there was some kind of nonconformity dealing with the paint that just fell in another category. Okay, so 144 of those bikes had some kind of nonconformity in the painting process. And we've got a count uh, for each one of the occurrences of these um, qualitative categories. Okay, So we have a qualitative variable here. That qualitative variable would be called nonconformity type. And we have six different um, values that this qualitative variable can take on and again, they are qualitative categories, and we've got counts of each of those qualitative categories. And so we want to depict this graphically somehow, okay? So we go over here in Excel, and we're going to use Excel just briefly uh, for these examples. Uh, Excel is not the very best way to portray uh, data, uh, I, whether it's qualitative or quantitative, uh, but we don't want to get too deep into a different um, uh, software package. Uh, let's just use Excel quickly um, and then move on. Okay, so what we're going to do is go up uh, to the um, insert function. Okay, and here we're going to insert. Let's first do a bar graph. Okay, so here's the insert function and here is a column chart. You could represent a a uh, bar graph is either a column or a, uh, a horizontal chart, okay, row chart. But let's go ahead and use a column, and let's just use a 2D column here, okay? So uh, we've got this open canvas here. We're going to right-click in the chart area, excuse me, right-click here, and we're going to select data, okay? Once we do that, we're going to enter a series. Okay, so we're going to add. The series name here is going to be the count. Okay, and the series values, we're going to delete what's there, and we're going to insert these. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the values that we're going to be reading into uh, this. Uh, bar graph. Okay, then we want uh, categories along the horizontal axis. We don't want just one, two, three, and four. We actually have names for those categories. So let's uh, add in our labels, which are here. Okay. And there we have it. So now we have a bar graph depicting these data. I always uh, remove the label here. If I'm going to insert this into a document, I'm probably going to put a label down at the bottom uh, in the text, you know, table one, and then give some longer descriptor of what this, uh, or probably figure one, and what this figure is representing. I, I never like to put the label up at the top. So if you uh, highlight on that, text box and you can just hit the delete key and remove it. Okay. 
So let's move this over here out of the way. Okay, so what do we see here? Uh, we see that runs are most populous, uh, others in the other category, uh, least numerous, and we get some depiction of how these, how the counts, how the frequency of each of these categories relate to each other. Okay, that's generally speaking what we get from a bar graph. Okay. The other uh, option for us is a pie chart. Uh, pie charts um, in the technical community, uh, in the data analysis community, pie charts are n viewed upon negatively. Um, there, if you search uh, the web, you can find a lot of different alternatives to a pie chart uh, that describe that describe essentially the same thing that a pie chart can. Uh, but let's go ahead and just for completeness, because this is a fundamentals class, let's go ahead and introduce the pie chart and how to. Uh, and how to uh, perform one in Excel. So we'll go to insert and we'll go to the insert a pie chart icon and let's just insert a 2D pie chart. Okay. And so same kind of idea here. We have an empty canvas. We're going to right click on that canvas and hit select data. And we're going to enter in the same uh, series that we did previously. So here's the series name, count the series values are in this column right here. And let's insert labels that are more descriptive than just the default categories 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And let's enter in this range right here for the label. Okay, so that's it. And so now we have a pie chart. Uh, I, again, I like to remove the label here. Okay, so what does this pie chart tell us? It gives us the different category breakdowns of, uh, for example, runs versus oversprays. Uh, we see, uh, or pardon me, light spray. Uh, we see others, the smallest category, and so on. Okay, uh, for both of these, let me move this down here. For both of these, we have some different options uh, on sprucing things up a bit. If we go to uh, the insert again, or pardon me, if we go to design, so we're clicking on, we've clicked on the uh, pie chart, and we have a lot of different ways to make this look, okay, uh, relative to the default uh, option. So here, for example, we still have the same categories, but now we have labels for the percentages of each one. Okay, that might be a little more useful to get not just a graphical depiction, but also a quantitative measure. And there are different coloring schemes. Uh, you can go over here, change colors to uh, different uh, coloring schemes throughout. Okay. So a few different options for graphically depicting this thing. Okay. And likewise for the uh, bar graph. We have a few different options, uh, at least color scale wise. Um, so for example, this was the default. Um, so we have labels on each one of these, giving their magnitude of count. Okay, you can have lines, horizontal lines going across. Uh, change it up a little bit, no lines going across, a slightly different shading, still numbers and so on. Okay, a few different options to play around with and of course we can always change the color uh, color scheme. The, whatever um, matches uh, the color scheme that we're using in a document. Okay, so again uh, graphically depicting qualitative variables uh, we've got bar graphs and pie charts uh, both depicting the same data set uh, this gives us an idea of uh, the frequency of different categories. Same kind of idea here if we can assume that all those categories make up the whole. Okay, and we've got a percentage of the whole for each one.